Zere brala braka sete bramanta. Come on, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nebrum brande sete brama la krundara sete bara. Mega hallelujah. Mere shatru ke bich me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Today you're going to sing in the midst of your enemy. Hallelujah. You're going to raise your voice and sing. Praise the Lord. And I believe and I challenge you today as a God's servant. If anyone among you is sick, stand up where you are right now and sing this song. I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe this is going to this is going to bring breakthrough in your family as you sing. And I believe today is going to be the day of deliverance in your house today it's going to be a day of restoration in your life hallelujah and i want you to stand up where you are and sing come on i raise a hallelujah when the presence of my enemy I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me
sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, your mercy never fails me 
and all my days have been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been Cause all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire in the darkest nights, you were close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. I know my life you have. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running now
people of God, welcome to our beautiful Good News Table. Today I have a beautiful testimony of a dear daughter of this house, Sister Shiny, and she writes to us sharing this beautiful, beautiful experience she had with the Lord. And uh, this came through a word that she received through the screen. Uh, she Shiny writes to tell us how there were days of, uh, you know, she going through this neck and shoulder pain. And uh, she did everything possible to get rid of it. She was even praying about it, thinking that it was healing that she acquired. Uh, during her prayer time, uh, she heard this sweet, sweet, still voice of the Lord saying that it was him. And Shiny was confused because we all know that pain and sickness does not come from the Lord. So she didn't really understand what that voice was and she kept on praying for a healing or you know trying to do everything to get rid of that of that uh, that pain in her shoulder. Uh, that Sunday uh, as, as she uh, as she was connected uh, during the fireplace she received a word and then continuing she was also listening to Prophet Shai Ju Matthew, who is uh, Pastor Derek's spiritual father. And uh, Prophet released a word uh, from the book of Joshua, and he said that God's hand is on your shoulder. And it was at that moment that Shiny got this confirmation of the sweet, still voice that was continually speaking to her. And she just took that word and as she consumed and as she studied and as she stayed with that word, she realized that it wasn't really healing. It wasn't really the pain that she had to struggle with. It was just the instruction, just the truth that needed to set her free. Amen. 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 Just her understanding of Lord placing His hand on her shoulder, that she was carrying his presence, that the, the, the promise of the Lord says that when you come to him and you take up his yoke, his yoke is easy and his burden is light, right? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It was a truth that had to set her free. The moment she took that word, it was supernatural, but she writes to explain how she experienced that, that weight just go off and the joy of the Lord fill her heart. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It is beautiful to know that you know, as we as we walk uh, in, a, in as we mature in our spiritual understanding with the Lord. And as we, uh, as, as we continue to walk with Him, it is beautiful how we get to hear Him. And it is so, so important, you know, Pastor Derek and Pastor Kim have always said this in all their teachings, that it is so important that we understand. Understanding is so important. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So it was a truth that set her free. Thank you, Sister Shiny, for sharing this beautiful testimony with us about your experience and sharing this experience uh, with us. People of God, today I want to just encourage you, if you haven't yet been a part of our prayer hub or of our, our five days, you've got to come here to, to taste and to experience it for yourself. Amen. We have received so many needs so many testimonies on our prayer huddle calls as well. When we get together, if you have a heart for prayer, go to come here and be a part of our prayer huddle. We get together to intercede and to pray and we receive testimonies of how people have experienced freedom from years of knee pain and backache problems and they didn't even realize while they were not praying for it and while they were just in just soaking in the presence of the Lord, they experience this, this breakthrough, this healing. Amen. Even on our fireplace calls, as, as we soak in the presence of the Lord and you know, as the man of God uh, brings the teaching and as we as we learn and as we as we grow deeper in the word, there have been so many testimonies of financial freedom, financial uh, breakthroughs of jobs, of promotions, of, uh, of healings. Amen. Praise God. 
So if you haven't yet been a part of our fireplace and warehouse, uh, you've got to get in touch with us and uh, come uh, to be blessed. Praise the Lord, this is Pastor Derek and I want to welcome you in the matchless name of Jesus. What a wonderful God we serve. What an amazing God we serve. I want to welcome all of you. I hope you are excited. I hope you've been growing. You've been seeking God with all your heart. You know, we may not be in person, but I'm telling you, these are the days that the Lord is pouring out His Spirit in a way that we cannot even understand. I really believe that God is at work, His purpose to perform in each one of our lives. And the more we learn to connect in the Spirit, the faster we grow. You know, I have lived around church for a very long time. And there is something that happens when you grow up in a church. You begin to take everything for granted. And that's why we see people coming for years to church and yet not growing. But it's amazing in this time of COVID where we are not able to connect physically, we are hearing double, triple the amount of testimonies coming by people just being hungry and connecting in the spirit. You know, the God we serve is a spirit. John chapter 4 tells us that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that is very important that we worship when we come to God, whether we are worshiping, whether we are praying, whether we are listening to the word, we must do it with a heart of sincerity, a reverence, a eagerness, a joy, because every time we focus on the word, we, we look intently into the scriptures, we are being transformed from one glory to the other. You know, I was telling our children the other day that the way God elevates us is by bringing us instruction. So I hope you are ready. As the word comes to you, I pray God that you are being elevated. You are being prepared. You know, last Sunday we talked about uh, the divine nature and we talked about what does it mean to live by the divine nature. Has God provided it for everybody? And we know that Jesus has provided the divine nature for all of us. It's not like he's provided for some and he's not provided for others. He's provided for everybody. We also touched on why don't we see everybody living in? What hinders us? What are the hindrances that keep us from living this divine nature or walking in this upgraded life? And then we talked about the, how do we partake of it? The formula of acquiring God's success, of acquiring God's promises in our life. And we are still in one Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and we are looking mainly at the scripture of becoming partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. Brothers and sisters, if there's any time in your life or my life that we need to start living 
this divine nature i'm telling you it's now because things are happening so crazily in the natural the enemy the spirit of the antichrist is raging mad but i'm telling you god is raising up a mighty warrior a mighty army a mighty army you got to believe this yesterday when i was in prayer i saw the lord high and lifted up and god was looking down and laughing at the people who are trying to bring about the agenda of the enemy and just like in the book of numbers a uh, book of exodus when you know the bible tells you when the the people of israel crossed through the red sea when it opened the egyptians saw it also and they thought let us also try try doing the same thing and we'll also go through it but that door was not opened for them that door was opened for you my dear beloved yes the church going through the red sea with the waves and the sea standing on the left and the right and they thought let's take advantage god's opened the way let's pursue them and kill them all and you know the bible says something beautiful god looked from the cloud of fire and the cloud he looked from the pillar of the cloud and from the pillar of fire he li- literally looked down and that's the word that god showed me he you know god was looking down and he removed out the wheels of the of the chariots of the egyptians that they began to sink as they began to pursue and i you know the lord just i saw this yesterday and i was just looking and i i believe there's a great revival coming in you and me and all of us who are ready god is positioning you to be that carrier of his revival and while the enemy is gloating and thinking his plans are coming to pass wait and watch god's going to remove the wheels of their chariot so that they stick in the mud and then they finally cry out and say guys god is fighting for them they finally get it that god is fighting for you ah uh, they are very slow amen but praise god they'll get it amen when they realize that you are living and i am living the upgraded life the divine life that god has intended for us so let me quickly get into what god has wants to speak today you know one of the most important things that i touched last time on was from i think one peter where i told you that uh, your enemy he roams like a lion 1 peter 5 8 you know he says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world and may the god of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while perfect establish strengthen and settle you this order is so important you know many people cannot follow this order and so they are never settled in the things of god you know what what he's saying here is basically number 1 if i can summarize he's saying your enemy first be sober and vigilant that means always be alert don't be a christian who is not alert of the spiritual realm that you are living in okay we are not going to talk about that you should have known that by now you are a spirit being living in a body which has a soul so you need to be aware of what is happening in your environment be vigilant don't be quick to react to everything every news every word every media every person who comes in your life don't be quick to get into gossips be be sober because the enemy is waiting to draw you into battles that are not for you waiting to draw you into fights that are not for you oh thank you jesus thank you lord let your word come in power and speak to people oh god i pray that you prepare us give us one step advance understanding of what the enemy is trying to do so that we may walk in the things you want us to so you need to be sober and vigilant conversations you have why because your enemy seeks whom he may devour he can't he cannot he will not he cannot devour everybody why because god has a hedge of protection around you god has his promises as a child of god as you keep walking if you look at jesus life you could not lay hands on him until the right time 
Why? Because he came to die. Jesus came to die, but he came to die at the right time, not in the devil's time. Amen. We are not here to die before our time. We are not here to go before our time. We are here to go, but we are here to go in our time. You need to be very sure about this. Very sure that nothing is going to touch me because I have decided to walk with Jesus, walk in the spirit, walk with him. And he says, resist him. You know, this is so important. Many people don't resist the enemy. And I told you about resistance. It's an equal and opposite and more powerful force that is applied on the incoming force. So many people, they are praying and asking God to heal them. But they are begging God as though he didn't do anything. Remember, in this kingdom, we everything that we have, God has already planned before the foundations of the earth. You must understand this. The location where you live, the promises, the blessing, the health, the prosperity, your partner, your job, everything about you, your ministry, God has already planned it. You just need to discover it. You don't have to go around creating new things. You have to go around discovering them and walking in them. More understanding, more walking. So, when we pray for healing, we are not praying to get healing. We are praying because we are healed. We pray because we know God hears. We don't pray because we are thinking, God, can you hear? No, we pray because we know He hears us. We know He hears us. And because we know He hears us, we know that we have got what we have asked Him for. Amen. That's a scripture verse. You can find it. So, there are many people who pray and their prayers are not answered because they are standing in a wrong position. You know, to live the upgraded life, to live the life that Jesus paid for. This word of God is non-debatable. It's not something that you can look at and begin to intellectually have a debate on. You know, you can, you know, arrogance in the in, in your intellect, you know, where you begin to say, no, you got to show me, I'm not going to listen if it's not there. No, no. You need to be asking God, Lord, I humble myself. Show me these things, how they work. Because it works. It works every time. The word of God is active and alive, powerful, m more sharper than a double-edged sword. So you've got to remember the word of God is active and alive. That means every day you get into the word, the word is active and it's alive to give you life in every area of your life. So if the word is not working, it's not that the word is not alive. It's just that we have not learned to tap into it. So remember, resist the enemy. Don't cry. Resist him. He's not the one to say, okay, you know, uh, today John has decided to follow Jesus. Guys, let's give him a break. Let's, you know, uh, give him some time to compose himself. He's made a big decision. He wants to walk in holiness and righteousness. No, no, no. They are going to say double the demons. Let's attack him. Bring his past. Bring his present. Bring condemnation. Bring his, his, uh, you know, his, his past. His friends. Bring everything to trick you, to make you fall, to make you condemn, so that you do not do what you want to do. So you must understand when you begin to get attacked by the enemy. Don't buckle down and go down. Exert an opposite and equal force in the name of Jesus because God has given us his name. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, I think, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Hallelujah. That means no lion, with no matter how many teeth he has, he can break into this fortress, the name of Jesus. Amen. God's name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. They're not will get saved, could be saved. You know, they might get shot while they're in the... No, no. The name of the Lord is a protection over your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you need healing right now, just shout out, Jesus, I receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, that's the way you receive it. And then he says, May And then he tells you, resist him, stand steadfast. And then he tells you, all your brothers are going through the same problem around the world. So if you are going through problems, don't think you are unique. Other brothers and sisters are going through the same temptations, same struggles, same pressures. But then he tells you, may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, 
perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. you know, I can't go into this. I went on this in the fireplace, but let me just say this to you. Many people want to be settled before they are established and strengthened and perfected. There is an order. So sufferings will come. If you don't believe it, read your Bible in Hebrews chapter 2. It tells you that Jesus went through sufferings and then was made perfected. So even he had to be perfected through sufferings. It's not that God brings sufferings. It's just that anyone who wants to live holy, who wants to walk in holiness, the enemy will attack you. If there is no attack on your life, I really don't know whether you are walking hand in hand with the enemy. That's why there's no attack. But remember, as long as you're damaging his kingdom, he will come in some way or form to attack you. But we are not worried about his attacks. Why? Because the God of all grace who has called us, that means number one, you are called. After you have gone through a little suffering, it's not that God wants you to go, but that resistance, that resistance that you undertake when the suffering comes, makes you grow, elevates you. The word comes and it makes the word work in your life. And once that word works, nobody can take your joy because now you've conquered. Yes, you've conquered, conquer church. <laughs> Amen. You know, there are several things in my life that... As I resisted, as I said, no, this cannot be, this doesn't align itself to the word of God. I cannot be living from hand to mouth. I cannot be suffering sickness. When I resisted it, I didn't win the first, uh, first try, but I continued to persist. Yes, I went through suffering, but I continued to persist because the word said it is true. And as I began to persist in the things of God, do you know that? That stronghold broke. And once it broke, I got settled in that. Now I don't fall in that area. Why? Because I got victory. God has established me. Understanding has come. That's why you need to understand that as long as you are not committed in your walk with God, you can be swayed like a, you know, like a, like the, like a, you know, the, like a wave on the sea. The Bible says in James that, you know, a man who doubts, a double-minded man, he's like a wave on the sea that is tossed by the wind. Today is here, to, you know, it's all happy, he's glad, Jesus loves him. The little persecution, he goes there and he gets depressed. No, 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 no. We have to walk with this God and put away the things of the flesh. Amen. So let me go for today's word and, you know, talk about it. The upgraded life. I want to talk to you a little about what is the power of this upgraded life. And uh, the Lord was speaking to me very firmly this week. Okay, so what I'm bringing to you, I want you to take heart because it will bless you. Because I believe it is 100% true when the Lord speaks it. The life of the Spirit, what is the power? behind the upgraded life. So what is the power? So when we talk about living this upgraded life, you must know that we have no power on our own. But thanks be to God, God gives us the power to become. You know, John chapter 112 says that he, to all those who believed him and received them, he gave power to become children of God. So we, in the kingdom, you get power to become what God wants you to become. God gives you grace. If you study the scripture, Paul received a grace from God to do what he was called to do. Similarly, each one of us receives power. And where do we receive this power from? It is the life of the Spirit. The power of the upgraded life is the life of the Spirit. And this life of the Spirit sets you free from the law of sin and death. This is a verse from Romans chapter 8. He says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life sets me free from the law of sin and death. So there is a law of the spirit of life that can set you free from every law. And you must know there's a law of sin and death also. And it's working. It's not that it's been removed. It's working. That's why if... The law of the spirit of life is not working in your life. Death will be working very fast. 
you know so many people are suffering it's because the law of the spirit of life is not working in their life so we want to talk about that today before we go there i just want to tell you there is one thing that you and i must do we must stop limiting god okay this is a very clear instruction from god that came to me you must stop limiting god you cannot fathom how god can do things he is not limited to your mind to my mind to the world's mind you know when we think god has to do something we are thinking you know he has to my boss has to take notice of me then my boss will rate me better then i'll get a better increase in my salary then i'll be more happy i'll be able to buy things you know meet my uh, financial needs and my aspiration this is not how god works okay this is how man works this is how man thinks and the lord you know i was reading the word of god and i i just got blown and i want to just share that with you you know the god we serve he's a god that you don't have to figure him out when i say figure him out means he's not the god who just because he did something today he's going to do it the same way if you look at jesus the way he healed one person he never healed the other person the same way one person he put spit and you know he spat and put something on his eye and you know that person could have, could have got offended he put you know spat the other person just touched him and he got healed the other one he just spoke and he got healed so there are different ways the spirit of god can do things in our life but we must not limit him with our carnal thinking you know a classic example of uh you know living the spirit life and allowing the the spirit life to work in our lives is i saw this in the book of i think in in numbers when we see that the children of israel and just think about this the children of israel did not have water and uh, god tells moses go to that rock and speak to that rock and that rock will give water for all these million of people i want you to just think when we read these miracles we begin to think that oh my god uh you know we just pass it because we've read it so many times i want you to just consider it think about it for a minute the last time you kicked a stone or you kicked a rock or you sat on a rock do you know that god can remove a whole river from that rock that you're sitting on do you know that many people when you don't walk by the spirit you are actually sitting in your promised land but you can't see it i'm telling you this is all over the bible that's why the law of the spirit of life is so important it is so important to walk by the spirit to live in the spirit because when you are not living in the spirit you can be in your promised land and you will not see it classic example is hagar how many of you know the story of hagar she was she ran away with her child ishmael she you know uh sorry she didn't run away abraham sent her away because you know the lord said that he won't be you know uh, his wife said you know get rid of this child so he 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 puts hagar he gives them you know ration gives them water but that water runs out as she goes in the wilderness so now hagar is sitting there she goes no water nothing you know in the wilderness death is imminent so she goes and sits under she goes and sits somewhere and a stone's throw away she keeps her son over there and she's angry and frustrated because you know she knows he's going to die there's no water there's nothing and she begins to cry now the bible very clearly tells you that the angel of the lord heard the prayer of not hagar he didn't hear the crying of hagar he heard the prayer of the son of ishmael who was under the tree where she kept him and she was going to watch him die and the angel of the lord comes to hagar and says fear not hagar the lord has heard the prayer of the child not your crying not your grumbling not your murmuring heard the prayer of the child and then the bible says god opened her eyes and do you know there was a spring and a well of water right where she was but she could not see it this is what i'm trying to tell you 
when we walk in the flesh we cannot see that we are actually sitting next to a spring it's right there all we can do is cry but god had to open our eyes for her to see it why because somebody that child was walking in the spirit that child prayed that child's cry from a true heart remember what we started off god is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth not in grumbling not in complaining not in anxiety not in worry in truthfulness this god is a spirit that means he sees you completely bare and naked when you come before him you can't hide anything you can't hide your emotion you can't hide your you know your motives they cannot be hidden he knows it and you know that's the most beautiful part that can comfort all of us that we don't need to pretend we don't need to say god i am somebody when i'm nobody we can just come and say god i'm nobody but because of you i'm somebody hallelujah we don't need to put on anything because we know we are not accepted because of our intellect we are accepted because he called us by name before the foundations of the earth you can look at the same thing walking in the spirit okay we are talking about walking in the spirit and we are going into something but i just want to give you some insight you look at the book of uh i think it is numbers again where moses now they are at the promised land they are in the promised land and they have to take over remember what did god tell abraham that i am going to give you this whole land to you and your generation now they are there so they know the promise this land belongs to them god has given it to them so moses gets 12 spies and the bible clearly tells you that these were all leaders leaders of their tribes leaders so there were 12 uh, uh, leaders that they sent them to to spy out the land the promised land yet when they came back they came back 10 of them with a bad report they came with a report and they spread that report that everyone in israel almost wanted to stone moses select a leader and go back but there were two of those people who saw everything differently and the bible clearly tells you that caleb and joshua they had a different spirit a different spirit we're talking about walking by the spirit i want to show you that while 10 people who were leaders they were not ordinary people that means they had worked hard they had shown proven themselves they had capability they had perseverance they had everything yet when they were sent to do something they came back saying you know the account was very 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 descriptive they said listen the land is beautiful everything but there are giants and those giants when we looked at them they were mighty and is and they said that when we look like grasshoppers in their sight we look like grasshoppers literally they say that so there's no problem the other two also saw giants remember they saw giants too but this is the difference between a men who are under the influence of the spirit who have a different spirit we know that Joshua was always in the tent of meeting when Moses left he was still found in the tent of meeting i pray god that your life is also found in the tent of meeting that you're not just in church to be in church to be somewhere so that the pastor can get you married so that the pastor can get your children you know uh, all uh, you know uh, baptized and do all those things no this all is okay but why are you here why are you part of god's global church because you want to be tuned into the spirit that is leading his body amen when we begin to move in that understanding no problem if we can see giants in the land you know what's the response let's not wait a second we can take it that's the response difference between a david and all david's brothers david's brothers even though they were so skilled and technical and working with Saul in the kingdom as generals they could only see goliath but when david came who was filled with the holy spirit he looked and he didn't just see goliath he saw a uncircumcised philistine challenging the armies of god and he said who are you today i'm going to cut your head hallelujah that's the response that's a man or a woman who's walking by the spirit and i'm telling you 
God is looking if you want to live the upgraded life you cannot walk in the flesh you just cannot because the law of the spirit of life sets you free from the law of sin and death and we're going to explain that but i just thought very important to bring this understanding of how people look at problems and they see it very differently but the same thing a man filled with the spirit walking in the spirit will see it as an opportunity the same thing that you think oh my god it's so bad my work is double my this is triple a man who is filled with the holy spirit walking in the spirit he will see it wow here comes my opportunity to rise here is a challenge that i will make sure the wisdom of god will bring glory in this situation here comes an encounter thank you god thank you god because you're opening a door i'm telling you it's the way we are seeing things it's not that god will put you in a very beautiful place and you'll have no problem that's not you don't need to walk in the spirit for that okay you don't need any faith for that god has called us to this life to start living eternal life now that means keep knowing god grace being added to you as you keep understanding him keep seeking him grace is being added to you knowledge is being added to you and now you are able to see things that no one else can see i hope this is blessing you think about it the next time you sit on a rock i want you to think this god can remove a river with all fish inside and everything and you're sitting on it and you're saying god take away this problem say god my god my god when i began to see that i was like how do we take you for granted lord you know the bible says something beautiful in psalm 78 i don't know which verse it is i think 40 but he says that they waxed the holy one of israel and limited him limited him if i can show you that Psalm 78 Ranto mo brosa katayala Rato mo kumreyate Hold on hold on okay Rato mbresete Mam broso kumrayate rede Lazo prayate kembo Psalm 78 Hmm Yeah yeah He remembered Yeah, Psalm 78:40. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved in grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the holy one of Israel. They did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. You know the Lord was telling me many of us on this call, you have forgotten the way God redeemed you with a mighty outstretched arm. I want you to today Sit down quietly before the Lord and think about how God saved you. What you were going through, where you would have been, how he took you from darkness and brought you into the light. If you get into the details of that transformation journey that and that had to be transformation that could not be you it had to be the power of the Holy Spirit because you believe the word that came to you. You didn't argue with it. You had nothing else. I sometimes think, you know, that the reason we don't walk in signs miracles and wonders is because we have too many things to put our trust on too many things consider abraham you know i'm giving you all these examples i got i have to teach you on this but i'm i'm giving you this so that you can understand you know when abraham married sara the bible clearly tells you that sara was barren yet if you look at sara's you know response to abraham abraham you know he pleads with god please give me a child you know in i think it's in genesis chapter 15 where he gets up yeah i think it's genesis 15 Yeah the lord comes to abraham and he says do not be afraid i am your great shield your great reward And then Abraham in 15:2 says Lord God what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus and Abraham said look you have given me no offspring indeed one born in my house is my heir you know when i read that it was really amazing because the bible tells you 
that Sarah was barren. I don't know. You know, in today's world, a doctor gives you a report and says you're barren. Finished. That's it. But look at Abraham. He didn't say my wife is barren over here. He said, you didn't give me any offspring. He was so certain that whatever the doctors say, my God is able to give it to me. My God is able to bring a river out of a rock. My God who called me is able to deliver me. Regardless of what the doctors say, my God is able to give me an offspring. And look what God does in verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This one shall not be your heir, but the one who will come from your own body will be the heir. Look at this. How beautifully God responds to him. He says, listen. This servant in your house will not be. And then to show him how it's going to work, he first gets him outside his tent. And he says, now look to the heavens and count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall you, your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. This is so powerful. You know, every time God has to show us something, he has to change the picture. You know, you need to change the picture. Some of you need to start seeing yourself do mighty exploits for Jesus. Some of you need to see yourselves. You know, if you're seeing yourself as an addict, you're seeing yourself as a failure, seeing yourself as a person who is stuck in a, in a sin, you need to change that. Don't fight that problem. Change the picture. Go out into the word of God. Open the word of God. See how God made you, transformed you, blessed you, raised you, broke the power of sin over your life. Look at the goodness of what God has done in the word and let that become the picture. Celebrate that. Talk about it. Tell your mother and father, hey, mom and dad, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And they'll turn around and say, liar, you just did this. One, two, three, say that's all OK, but I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. No longer the old has gone. Behold, the new has come. Celebrate what God has said about you, not what the world says about you. This is the way I've got many of my breakthroughs in my life. You just have to stop allowing the world to feed you their garbage and get into the word and start believing. Look what it says here. Abraham believed. The minute God took him out and showed him all the stars in the sky, Abraham didn't get up and say, I don't have one child and you're showing me all these stars. Lord, is that fair? Is that right? Are you mock mocking me? Are you, are you showing me something that, you know, I can never have? Do you know what Abraham? He believed. And the Bible says it credited to him, accounted it to him as right. Do you know that in the kingdom, God credits all his promises. You can take it to the bank and credit it. <laughs> Yeah, the Bible tells you that all God's promises are yes and amen. The problem is the way we receive it. That's why we are not able to receive and live this upgraded life. You know, the word of God is so precious. You know why we are calling this series the upgraded life? Because every promise of God is upgraded to a higher standard than what this world is telling you to live by. This world is giving you downgraded information, downgraded. But when you look into this word of God, it's upgraded. This world tells you, you you're going to die with sicknesses. The Bible tells you by his wounds, you are healed. The world is telling you all the resources are going to get depleted. Climate change is going to happen. You know, a year of all the vegetable prices high going on. Listen, if there is nothing to eat on this earth, just believing the word of God will create something to eat. Yes, our God, he'll rain it down in your house. That's our God. He can take one loaf, one small piece of bread that is in your house and turn that into a bread factory. Yes, that's our God. We don't have to worry about things going up, going down. We need to stay in the word because the word is able to supply all our needs in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, the Bible says, I think it's in Ephesians uh, 3.20, he says, And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above 
all things that we can imagine, ask or think of according to the power that's working within us. The power that works within us is the power of the Holy Spirit. The more we yield to the Holy Spirit, the more we don't listen to this carnal world, the way it thinks, the way it functions. You know, we need to start challenging when people open their mouth, when people come and say, no, this cannot happen. You know, recently somebody came to me and they said, ah, they came to service my AC and they said, ah, this AC is a very bad AC. Uh, this AC always gives trouble. I said, no, 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 no. It may be giving everybody else trouble. In my house, it lasts forever hallelujah everything in my house it does not work the way it works in the world why because this house is blessed what is the blessing that god gave you you know what the blessing he gave you the bible tells you in galatians 3 he says that christ redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse right and why did he do that he did that so that the blessing that was given to Abraham might come to us Gentiles. That through faith we might receive the promised Holy Spirit. So I'm thinking, God, you did all this to bring the spirit life back onto us. You must understand. Let me take you quickly there. I hope you're following with me. I hope you're following with me. I hope you're following with me. Please understand, we are here to live a spirit life. That means we are here not to fall in the same problems your neighbor falls, your brother falls, your unbelieving brother, neighbor, cousin. No, these things cannot touch us because we are living by the spirit. Galatians chapter 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So remember, Jesus hung on the tree so that every curse that stood against you, every law that stood opposed you, every regulation that was against you, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Thank you, Jesus. There is a blessing on Abraham. If you read Genesis chapter 12, God says that I will bless you in blessing. Everyone who blesses you is blessed. Everyone who curses you is cursed. And through you, through your seed, all nations shall be blessed. And we know that seed is Jesus. And in Jesus, we also have been placed. Therefore, you are blessed with the blessing that is on Jesus Christ himself. Oh, I'm telling you, we cannot settle for anything else. Guys, this is the time the church shines the most brightly in the darkest time. This is not your time to be quiet. This is not your time to fret and sit down and talk unbelief like your neighbors and your friends. This is the time to rise and shine. Tell everyone about the goodness of God in your life. You know, I was telling our, uh, our youth on the fireplace, our life has to be an experiment. I'm telling you, if your life is not an experiment of the goodness and faithfulness of God, you are basically sitting and playing safe. You should be taking every scripture and saying, God, I want it to work in my life. Here I am. Here I am, Lord, the sacrifice. Take me, Lord. I want it to work. And you should be able to say, let's experiment with this verse. Lord, show it to me. I want to put it to test and I want to see it work in my life. And I'm telling you, you will be amazed at the things that God will do if you are ready to believe Him. Anyway, let me just go on. I want to go to so uh, yeah i was telling you about let me just finish this one point i was telling you about abraham and his barrenness and i was telling you how god looked at abraham who was barren 99 years old sarah 90 years old both incapable completely barren and god from a barren man as good as dead removed descendants like the stars of heaven what does that tell you 
God is up to something in all our lives. And you must understand this. Abraham tried very hard to produce a son in his flesh. Yet God told him that the son that will come will not be out of your flesh. Means it, it won't be out of your effort. It has got to be God. I hope you're understanding. It came from him only, but it came in a supernatural way. And when Abraham produced an Ishmael through his own effort, he brought that son to God and he said, bless him. And you know what God said? He said, no, I'm not going to. This cannot. He just said no. And here Abraham was, oh God, after God telling him all, everything that he's going to do in his life, Abraham quietly says, can you please bless Ishmael? And God says, no. I will bless him. I'll bless him with riches. I'll bless him with everything. But my covenant, I'll establish through the seed that I will bring out of your body. And so Abraham had to wait for that. He had to wait for that. What is the relevance of that in our life? When we live by the Spirit, the things that are birthed through us, they move in a different dimension, in a different covenant. You look at the things in our life that we have done in our flesh. And then we come to God and say, please bless this Ishmael. And God says, I never told you to do this. I gave you a promise that I would do this for you. But here you are, you've gone and done it on your own strength. And I'm asking God, please bless this. I'm telling you, I'll, I'll ease your pain. <laughs> God won't bless it. God doesn't bless it. He is not a person to, you know, take sides. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. In my life, I've birthed many Ishmael. And I've realized that, thank God that, you know, God amazingly and beautifully let all those go. Till he brought me into understanding that I have to live by the Spirit and birth the things he wants me to birth. Until I, I do not understand how to live by the Spirit, I'm telling you, you will be only standing in prayer lines to pray over the problems you have created. You know, when Abraham birthed Ishmael, today, till today, we are facing the greatest problem from that Ishmael. Because that son that was born from the flesh is attacking the son that was born from the spirit. Till today. Till today, they are persecuting. You go to Iraq and go to Iran, they are cutting off Christians' heads, they are killing them. That's all the sons of Ishmael who have grown powerful, blessed, with all the oil in the world, yet they do not have the Spirit of God, so they cannot understand. And so they persecute. They make fun of the children of promise. I pray God that you will get rid of birthing any Ishmael's in your life from today. That you will say, God, I want to walk by the Spirit. Let's go quickly to Romans chapter 8 so we can get into what I want to say what the Lord put on my heart. In Romans chapter 8, there's so much. Remember, today we are talking about walking by the Spirit, okay? This is the Spirit of life. So I'm reading from verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So he's saying, there is therefore now no condemnation. Whenever there is, that, that word there is, you need to know that it is there for a reason. So when he's saying there is, there is a reason why it's there. And the reason why he's saying there is now no condemnation is because if you read in chapter 7, there is something really amazing that Paul began to notice in his own life. In 7.22 he says, For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. So this is Paul saying that I love God in my inward man. I delight in him. Then he goes on to say, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind 
and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members so he's saying that while i delight to do god's will i am noticing that there's another law remember we are talking about the law of sin and death and the law of the spirit of life okay and we said that the law of, of the spirit of life sets me free from the law of sin and death but the explanation of that law and sin and sin and death is in chapter 7 verse 20 22 onwards so he says that i delight in the law of god according to the inward man but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members members means your body your flesh and then he goes on to say oh wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body of death so he at that point he realizes that even he is suffering from the same problem what is this problem that while he wants to do god's will he wants to do he delights because remember in your spirit man when you got born again god made you a new creation in your spirit so in your spirit you always want to follow god god when you believe jesus he took away that old sinful man of yours and he nailed him to the cross that old sinful man was making sure that your body always sinned always did things that were wrong but once you believe jesus that he died for your sin when you believe jesus that old man was crucified on the cross and god gave you a new man a new creation that's why you are a new creation amen that's 2 corinthians 5:17 so now this new man he delights in doing things of god but while he is delighting there is another man sitting there is another law not another man another law in your members and they will not submit to the things of god and why is that this is because that when you live from you know 0 to 25 or till the day you receive christ that old man taught your body taught your mind how to sin how to fight how to give back all your past experiences that's why your members they have they have knowledge already inbuilt in them that's why you notice that even though you're saved today you still react like your father because you've seen how your father was and you have been doing that in you know before you came to the lord so now even sometimes you just end up doing the same thing you end up getting angry you end up you know doing some things and it's not that you want to do it because you don't have a sinful nature anymore you have a brand new you are a brand new creation but your body was taught how to sin and all that information is in your members it's sitting right there that's why paul is saying i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members very important what i'm sharing with you okay to live the spirit life you must understand this o oh, wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body of death you know i struggled with this all my life because here i was i had a brand new spirit i loved god and yet there were so many times that i ended up doing things that i didn't love to do and it's not that i wanted to do it i didn't want to do it but yet i ended up doing what i did not want and that's exactly what paul is saying he ended up doing things that he did not actually want but he realized it's not him who is sinning because there is something else within this body that is forcing him to sin so he cries out o oh, wretched man who will deliver me from this body of death And then in verse 25 he says I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with this mind I serve the law of God but with the flesh of with, but with the flesh the law of sin so he finally realizes who will deliver me and then he shouts out and says through Jesus Christ our Lord so he he basically says that there's only one way to be delivered from this battle that is raging in our bodies remember our bodies have to yet be redeemed that's why god is telling you to live by the spirit because when you live by the spirit this battle that paul faces you face and i face we can overcome we can overcome it yes brothers and sisters i want you to look at this verse here in 
Romans chapter 8 verse 5 For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I want you to know these are the most, these four scriptures are the most important for you and me. He's telling you that as long as you live according to the flesh, and we know what the flesh is, right? The flesh is filled with passion, filled with fornication, adulteries, lasciviousness, all kinds of wicked thoughts, they come from there. They come from your, your flesh who has been exposed to the old man that Jesus crucified on the cross. It's like this, you need to understand it. If you have seen uh, somebody suffer from cancer, you know, cancer of certain parts of their body, even though the cancer is removed, you can see the impact that it has done to the body. This is something that you need to understand that even though your old man, your old sinful man was taken away and a brand new man put in your body, the effects that that sinful man had on your body are still there. And that's why God is telling you, don't live by that flesh. Because if you live by that flesh, that flesh will teach you to do things that will bring death in your life. The law of sin and death. I hope you're getting this. I know it is not an easy message. I know it requires you to think. It requires you to study the word of God. I, but I'm giving you evidence. This is how you win this battle. You need to start living by the spirit. Because as long as you live by the spirit, you will not have sin and death work in your life. He goes on to say, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you want to see the evidence for this, you can just go to Romans chapter 6. And you can read from verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So here he's telling you clearly, your old man, that the old spirit of yours, that sin that you inherited from Adam was crucified. That the body of sin might be done away with, that you should be no longer slaves to sin. And then he said, for he who has died has been freed from sin. And then if you come down, look at verse 11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin but a life to God in Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. So what is he saying? Do not, he says, likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead, indeed to sin. So while God has done this amazing thing, I'll explain it. When he went to the cross, he took away that old nature and you believe the gospel, that old nature of yours died. God put a new spirit in. He's saying now that a new spirit is in, reckon yourselves. That word is very important, underline it, reckon yourselves. I wrote the explanation of it. You know what the meaning reckon means? It means carefully establish by calculation. Compute, put a figure on, to consider or regard in a specified way. You know, the Bible tells you that you need to reckon. That means carefully consider that you do not start resurrecting what God has already crucified. So be careful. The way the enemy tricks you is that he'll show you that you're sinning in your flesh and then he'll say you have not changed. It's not true. You have changed. It's just that you have not reckoned yourself dead. So you're alive to your flesh and you're not living by the Spirit. And that's why you keep falling. But I want to tell you that the word of God clearly tells you that those who live, and I'm in Romans 8, 5, according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace do you know that every day every day of our lives we are choosing either to focus on the spirit or to focus on the nature of the flesh that means we are either yielding to the flesh or we are yielding to the spirit of god that is within us and remember the bible tells us those who are led by the spirit of god they are sons the bible also tells us that you cannot please god as long as you are in your flesh do you know that you and i let me give you a practical example you're doing your work and all of a sudden something happens and you want to get angry you want to shout you want to curse you want to give bad words you want to get angry you want to gossip you want to slander do you know at that very moment the spirit of god that is inside of you can communicate with you and if you yield to him you will do the things that god wants you to do that means as long as you allow your body allow yourself to walk and be carnally minded to be carnally minded is simply walking by your own you know your flesh your feelings your emotions by your you know by by sight so you are living like a very physical being uh, just like everybody on this world operates so as long as you are working in that capacity carnally that means you are not using the spirit that god has given you to discern what should i do in this situation should i give back should i fight the minute you tap into the spirit you will get the right answer and you will begin to walk in that grace i've seen it when a report card comes when a report comes from the doctor that is wrong or you know that that basically cancels or you know pronounces that you have some problem how do you react do you just fall out like all the others do you just go and cry and say this is going to happen no tap into the spirit of god tap in and start living how god wants you to live don't give in to what this world gives you and start reacting carnally do not brothers and sisters many times we are literally pronouncing curses over our life it is better to be silent i'm telling you now most of the time i have learned that if if i cannot operate spiritually the better thing is just keep quiet not answer because nobody will give you wrong marks for not answering right but you can destroy your life when you start living by the flesh because the bible is very clear those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit look at verse 13 he says for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you will put to death the deeds of the body you will live for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are sons of god so he's clearly telling us here look at the life of jesus if you look at the life of jesus you will have to see something amazing about his life jesus everything he did was spirit led if he went to pray the holy spirit took him if he was driven to fast the holy spirit led him even the apostles they wouldn't even give the gospel because the holy spirit restrained them they were not men who moved by the flesh they were men who moved by the spirit i pray god that this is your life from today you are not doing things you are not creating ishmaels you are not doing things in your flesh and then you know you have to go and undo everything and you know waste your time waste your money no God will do everything for you as long as you are a man or woman who is carried by the spirit i'm telling you this power of the upgraded life cannot be one in the flesh it's impossible that's why i've taken time to explain to you and i know it's it's a heavy word i know it's not everybody but you have to you have to understand this word this is actually basic very basic word I know but for some people it's very high they cannot understand what has happened that's why you need to research what happened to you why do you keep falling why is it that I cannot live this spirit life it's because you are just acting from years of training 
indoctrination by that old spirit that has come into your flesh so you react immediately the way you have always been working but can i tell you there's another way there's another way it's called the way of the spirit the spirit of life that when you hold back and not react and say god how you want me to react you will be led by the spirit and i'm telling you when you are led by the spirit you will always look like you're losing a battle but can i tell you you will always come out on top because in the flesh this flesh always wants to win an argument give back fight prove itself show everything that it's right but in the spirit you see jesus many times not answering moving away going into other places you know he was very strategic about the way he lived life why because he was moving by the spirit you can see that even in adam and eve you know adam he was created in glory forget adam i mean even if you look at the angels every time the the angelic realm looked upon the flesh they got converted so if you if you study in the book of genesis the bible tells you that the angels of god the sons of god looked upon the women and they had relations sexual relation with them and do you know what titus tells you the minute they did that they lost their position and god held them in chains for eternity till the day of judgment because they could not keep their position do you know many children in the in the church of god because they operate in the flesh they are not able to keep their positions they lose it that's why you see so many scandals of men of god because while we are we are very excited to preach we are not very excited to beat the same body and make it subject to the law of the spirit so that after preaching we only don't fall that's in the book that's what paul said after preaching i beat myself so that i myself may not be disqualified for the prize so that i don't fall in the same areas you know it is so important i was telling you about the angels created at a higher realm they look down on a lower they look at the flesh they get tempted they commit adult they commit uh, sexual immorality and then you know produce giants the nephilim and the the book of jude tells you that god held you know removed them from their places of authority you can see the same thing in adam and eve adam and eve were created in glory why am i telling you this because god has created you and me to be in glory to move in power but you got to understand this that while you're created in glory you can be doing things in the flesh that can rob you and create the law of sin and death to apply in your life look at adam and eve created in glory god gives them a command what does eve do she goes and she starts roaming around that tree looking at the tree long story short she eats and what did god say the day you eat you die not you will die you surely die so now you see eve coming she's lost her glory and now adam is looking at something that has already been degraded we're talking about the upgraded life so now he's looking he's looking at eve without the glory same thing happens what happened to the angels happened to adam now he looks at eve without her glory and now he has to make a decision do i go with her or do i stay here he knew that if he stays here she goes out of the garden so he decides to join her the minute he joins her both from glory they move to they they they, are, they lose their glory and now they are running around in shame and they want to cover themselves because now their eyes are open and they can see their nakedness you see jesus jesus similar he's he's also an adam okay jesus is also an adam so when you look at adam the way god does things is amazing god makes adam to sleep and when he sleeps from adam he removes eve amen we know that and then he blesses adam and you know the bible tells us they were covered in glory they were covered in god's glory so eve was removed out of adam in the same way 
when jesus came onto the earth what does he do the same way adam was put to sleep jesus also went to sleep when i say went to sleep he died but when he died he died he looked at this church he looked at the people that he came to die for and he saw they had lost all their glory just as adam saw eve remember keep these two pictures adam saw eve without a glory jesus comes sees his people all full degraded they are lost their life they are living degraded lives he looks at them but adam chooses to go and join eve and lose his glory but jesus goes ahead and dies pays the price for our shame then he's raised up to glory and now he's bringing us up into glory i hope you got that there's so many beautiful things about adam and jesus the same way when jesus died he died for all of us who had no glory but when he rose again he was raised up in glory and now we are seated in glory god removed from jesus his church that's why we are in christ just like god removed eve out of adam god removed us the whole church out of his son jesus but when adam joined eve they both fell down from glory they went lost their glory but in jesus we all get our glory back if you want to see this it's written here in hebrews i'm going to end with this so hallelujah i hope i hope i hope you are look at this hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we see jesus who was made a little lower than angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god might taste death for everyone this is what i was telling you so jesus comes sinless no sin he becomes sin so that we might become the righteousness of god he tastes death for everybody for it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings the word you need to focus on in bringing many sons to glory glory Jesus has bought back the glory on you and me. Now we don't have any excuse to say oh my god I don't have this I don't have that. Whatever you don't have it's a lack of knowledge. Let me tell you. We studied it in one in 2 Peter chapter 1. He says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. If you don't have something working in your life that God has provided it's not because God didn't give it it's because you don't have the required knowledge on that particular aspect that god has provided so if you are lacking in finance if you do not understand tithing you do not understand god has put a law that if you do not put him first if you do not give him the first fruits then the enemy has an opening to come and rob and keep you lacking all the days of your life keep you bound So you need to find out what God's word says about that situation that you're going through. Because the more you find out, the more glory comes on your life. Whatever you're struggling with today, if you are struggling with addiction, you're struggling with with anger, bitterness, lust, anything, I want to tell you, God has through Christ Jesus has brought many sons to glory. You just don't know it. You're still operating in your flesh. Can I tell you that today's word is coming to you so that you can begin to start living the spirit life. Remember, if you walk carnally, the Bible clearly tells you that death will be produced, but those who walk by the spirit, life, life and peace. So I give you this word today. I want you to consider how you do things in your normal christian life i want you every time to take a pause and think are you operating in the spirit or are you operating in the flesh 
because remember even paul faced the same dilemma and he cried out who will deliver me from this body of death and then he shouts through christ jesus our lord the only way you can escape the law of sin and death is through the law of spirit so can i invite you to some dying that's why jesus said if you die i live do you know god took so long to make sure abraham and sara were completely dead so that now he said now i can remove the promise from you and i can bring forth the descendants as the stars as long as they were alive bringing out his smiles god could not work but the day they decided we are as good as dead now if if this promise has to come to pass god has to do it i am telling you you may be facing a womb that is barren that barren womb can be a room in your house that you know needs uh needs some things to be put in it can be it can be you know your finances it could be uh a house that has lost children and it needs to come back there are a broken relationships in families it can it can mean anything barren womb can mean anything but can i tell you our god can remove from that barren womb and make your descendants like the stars of the heaven this is our god please don't limit him from today don't limit him don't debate with god believe him because this god does not work as we think his word clearly says in isaiah 55 for as high as the heavens are from the earth so great are my ways from your ways and my thoughts from your ways and my thoughts from your thoughts so just remember every time you cup start thinking in your mind of how god is going to bless you instead of thinking in your mind how he is going to bless you get into the word and get the spirit out of this word because when you get into the word the word is spirit that spirit will start manifesting you will have faith to believe god for things that you cannot even imagine exist on this earth you will begin to have faith and believe god for things beyond what you can see beyond what people tell you because our god is right now ready to break forth and bring amazing miracles in your life don't limit him don't limit him don't limit him to any report don't limit him to your present present condition don't limit him to anything because the god you serve is way above everything else he can remove a river from your belly that can move out of your home bless your neighbors bless your cities bless your buildings bless our nation he can remove a whole river from one person's belly and i'm telling you that's revival that's what god said from your belly shall come forth rivers and i am believing god that this upgraded life we will all begin to live where we will have testimonies like crazy because now we have learned to believe god and take him at his word we are no longer living by the flesh because by the flesh we will inherit sin and death but when we move by the spirit there is a law of the spirit that breaks that law of sin and death in our life and gives us the abundant life that god came to give us so bless you i pray god this word has blessed you it really blessed me to think about many things in my life where we are operating maybe at a carnal level where we should not be you know we limit god in the way god can work through our ministry and we you know we limit him in so many things i pray god that today you're taking all the limits of god in the way he can work through your life remember a man of the spirit sees things that men who are operating in the flesh cannot understand i gave you examples of joshua caleb i gave you examples of abraham i gave you examples in the word of god there are so many examples where people cannot see because they are trusting the arm of flesh but when you trust the lord 
when you move by his word and move by the spirit you will begin to see things that you have never seen in your life in your generation in your family and you will believe god just like abraham believed even though nothing could be seen in the natural you will have what you have believed because the god you serve calls those things that are not as though they are god bless you let me know how this word touched you leave your comments and uh, we'll see you on the fireplace and see you next sunday till then walk in the spirit and keep praying in the spirit and be led by the spirit god bless you mm-hmm.